As an officer patrolling the lonely stretch of highway, I thought I had seen it all. Broken taillights, speeding drivers, even the occasional lost animal. But little did I know that this fateful night would lead me down a path of terror I could never have imagined. It was a moonless night, and the darkness seemed to envelop the world around me as I drove. The rain added an extra layer of gloom, its rhythmic patter creating an unsettling backdrop to my thoughts. Just when I thought it couldn't get any stranger, my headlights revealed a figure walking along the roadside, drenched in rain. Instinctively, I pulled over to offer assistance. The woman appeared distraught, her clothes torn and her face streaked with tears. Officer, please help me, she implored, her voice shaking. I've escaped my abusive boyfriend. He was driving me and I had to jump out of the car to save myself. A chill ran down my spine, but I pushed aside my apprehension, focusing on my duty to protect and serve. I assured her that she was safe now and offered to call paramedics. She protested against any kind of medical assistance and insisted that I drive her home. Against my better judgment, I agreed to give her a lift home. Relief washed over her as she climbed into the back seat of my patrol car. As we drove, she shared her harrowing tale and my heart went out to her. I couldn't fathom the fear and pain she must have endured, and I vowed to do everything in my power to get her safely home. She provided an address, and I followed the dark, winding roads, trusting the dispatch to notify backup units of my location. The woman seemed anxious, glancing out the window as if expecting trouble. But I assured her that we were almost there, hoping to ease her fears. As we approached the given address, I noticed the neighborhood was eerily quiet. The streetlights flickered ominously, casting sinister shadows on the pavement. The house itself seemed abandoned, dilapidated. Could she actually live here? The question of who this woman really was echoed through the back of my mind. My instinct screamed at me to be cautious, but I brushed it off as paranoia. We're here, I said, pulling up in front of the house. As the car came to a slow halt, I glanced behind me to see how she was holding up. The woman seemed nervous. Could you please walk me to my door? She asked in what was almost a whisper. Acknowledging her request, I agreed and got out of the car, walking around to open her door. Trying to break the awkwardness of this eerie air, I started. You know, I just realized I didn't get the chance to ask you your... But I was cut off. Suddenly, two men emerged from the shadows, their faces obscured by darkness. Panic surged through me as I realized we had walked right into a trap. Before I could react, they yanked open the back doors of my patrol car, overpowering me with brute force. My training kicked in, and I fought back with all my strength, determined to protect myself and the woman, but it was too late. They pinned me down, and I felt a searing pain in the back of my head as I lost consciousness. When I awoke, I was disoriented and bound tightly, my hands tied behind my back. I was in a dimly lit room, and the two men stood nearby, arguing with the woman. It was clear that she had set me up, and I felt a mix of betrayal and rage. To her disadvantage, the two men were pressuring her, angry that she lured an officer here instead of a regular civilian. Taking advantage of their distraction, I wriggled free from my restraints. The pain in my head throbbed, but I knew I had to act fast. Carefully, I crawled towards the door, avoiding making any noise that could alert the trio to my escape attempt. As I reached the door, I looked back one last time to see the woman pleading with the men, her face filled with desperation. My heart ached for her, but I couldn't afford to let sympathy cloud my judgment. I made a break for it, sprinting through the darkened house, fueled by fear and adrenaline. My surroundings were unfamiliar. Just as I reached the front door, I could hear the approaching sirens growing louder. I burst outside, my eyes stinging from the rain and my breath coming in ragged gasps. My police car was a few feet away and I stumbled towards it, using the last of my strength to get inside. As I fumbled for the radio, I called for backup, my voice shaky but urgent. 
The dispatcher confirmed that units were on their way and urged me to stay safe. Within minutes, the backup units swarmed the area, but the house was now empty, like a ghost town. There was no trace of the two men or the woman. In the aftermath of that night, I couldn't shake the feeling of vulnerability. The darkness held secrets that I wanted no part of, and the shadows whispered tales of danger that would haunt me forever. After the incident, I swore I would never drive at night again. Thank you for watching. Please subscribe for more videos. And if you enjoyed the content, don't forget to smash that like button.